And we're going to be announcing uh, signing to Century Media. Wow. So now we're label mates officially. Congratulations, dude. Uh, Mike Gator was a big piece of that. You know, I, uh, shout shoot. out Gator, man. Shout, out. Gator. <laughs> shout out to Gator, man. <laughs> I'll show you. And went straight to the venue, straight to sound check. Like, we had no time to do anything. <laughs> Whenever I need music gear, I always go to Sweetwater.com. If it's mics, headphones, or studio and recording gear, Sweetwater has you covered. Next time you need any music gear, support the podcast by using the link in the description and comment section below. Radio I truly voice. was a radio host when I went oh, to his IEP okay. for a semester. Yeah, really? Are you yeah, serious? no bullshit. I did a I did a semester at Indiana University of PA, um, and I was bored as shit. I had no friends. It's actually where I met Jack Murray from One Five Six Silence before he'd ever been in a band. It's really crazy how that worked out. But uh, I wanted something to do that wasn't sitting in a dorm room smoking weed, and uh, I was in the communications program, and I thought to myself, well, shit, I may as well see if uh, they want someone to do like a like a uh, how do I put it I guess like a little session for like you know that would specialize in metal music uh, and I actually got really lucky with the time slot because it was once a week Tuesdays midnight to 2 a.m. Yeah. and at that point in time you don't have to follow the FCC regulations for radio censorship so I could really? play uncensored metal I, I didn't Sick. have to worry about you know hitting the censor button to bleep out any cuss words or you know, if, I, if they were saying fuck or shit or yada, 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 you know, I didn't have to do about anything like that. So I would just literally pull up a Spotify playlist of songs I wanted to play that week. I would play two, three songs at a time, step outside of the radio station, <laughs> smoke some weed, go back in, run the PSA, talk about the songs we just played, hit it again, repeat, <laughs> two hours, go back once a week. It was actually a lot of fun. I ended up leaving IUP after a semester and went back to Kent State, but uh, I always remember doing that. How old were you when you were doing that? I was a sophomore, so I might have been 19 at the time. Wow. Now imagine doing that, and now you're here. Honestly, yeah. It's kind of, it's so, yeah, I, I, was, I was more than prepared for this. Well, I'm like, oh, okay. Moment. That's why I asked about the headsets, you know, because this is, I had to do this whenever, uh, whenever I was talking on the air. So yeah. not like anyone was listening. It was 12 to 2 in the morning in a very local area, but I was still having fun with it. Totally. <laughs> you were the biggest name in fucking... Uh, you Whatever metal. small ass the, town, the, yeah. only, <laughs> the only name in Indiana County Metal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Holy shit, dude! Well, guys, it's an honor to have the full band of Science of the Swarm. I'm fucking stoked to have you guys, dude. We're stoked yeah. to be here. Pleasure this is here. our first interview as a full band together with this lineup. So this is like really fucking sick for us. Great, man. It feels like I was just seeing you guys. Like we were just <laughs> we were just in Portland smoking, talking. Hey, you guys should uh, hang out on the podcast. And now and, and now we're here. Now we're here, baby. You Boom. Don't fucking know it. So, since that time, which was, I mean, the spring, you guys from there went to, what, Asia? You went to... Yeah, so, like, the day after Chaos and Carnage ended, we had a day off. We rented a hotel. We got all our affairs in order. We practiced, and we slept. And then our merch guy, uh, Duber, he drove us to LAX, and we flew right out to Australia. Yeah. So it that was it was a grand total of like three and a half days from that tour to beginning a, a stretch in Australia. That was about ten days. Then we did three days in New Zealand, and then we did another ten ish days in Asia, multiple countries. Is that right? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that shit was brutal because we went from playing like twenty five thirty minutes on Chaos and Carnage, yeah. and then we had one day to run like an hour and five minute set. Yeah, we yeah. just crushed it in some tiny little room. Outside of LA, <laughs> Dude, I forgot we even. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we went over the first day. We went the over there was the first time we played days. played that set, and we were like, "Damn, we or got in over our heads a little bit." Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it was all the flying and everything, and I mean, obviously, you know, yeah. getting off and playing for for what feels like forever, going from right. twenty five minutes on chaos. We to, literally like, left from the airport, and when we landed in Australia. And went straight to the venue, straight to sound check. Like we had no time to do anything. <laughs> These yeah. guys didn't have any power inverters. For oh us. yeah, that's oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, you got, you got, I'm you like, what do you mean? <laughs> well, no, scrambling to. Get the together. flight had been delayed initially, so we're sprinting through the airports. It was a miracle we got on our connecting flight. We get picked we, up by our liaison, Gino. We didn't even get. That's the connecting flow. They, oh, they yeah, ended up being delayed. It. It. it was we a whole other it. fucking yeah, flight. We, yeah, we, we booked it because the flight out of LAX got delayed two hours. Yeah, every so, flight is 
yeah, it was flying right now. so <laughs> we're, on, we're on the way there we're, I remember we're on the way there in the van to the venue because like sound check is literally in about 45 minutes and Dave asked our liaison Gino he's like yo you guys have the power and Verta's situation worked out right and Gino just turns around and hands us the like the wall plug adapters like you'd use for your phone when you're traveling yes. and immediately like I didn't say anything at the moment but I was like oh shit <laughs> like, in my head I'm like something's <laughs> I was like oh god no it's so a, it's the last time the first time I went to uh Europe earlier this year, we fried some shit. And the last time, we, the first time we went to Asia, you, we fried oh, some shit. You say yeah. Mike, 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 Mike fried so, some shit. Yeah, so that was coming off the, the tour we did with Fit for an Autopsy at the beginning of this year. And, you know, I was, so um, I had just been made a full-time member of Science. We didn't announce it until Chaos and Carnage ended, but I was made a full-time member of the band right before my birthday in February. Wow, so, congratulations. Thank you. It, it, I mean, tangent, but that was a dream come true because I'd been a fan of Signs of the Swarm since you know 2017 um this so is, wow. getting the to text from dave in ohio every time we play ohio yeah yeah because <laughs> i legitimately you know fucked with the band and i wasn't trying to like punch up but when i realized you guys w were rolling without a bass player i did figure i'd shoot my shot oh, dude, you shot your shot I was like, Bro. yeah i shot my shot but guess what you texted me <laughs> <laughs> so it goes to show you got it you so, gotta shoot. but we we had just come <coughs> off of that tour, and I was really really concerned about. Um, it's just my wait. No, you, we gotta roll a special one with him. He has to have a spliff. As oh, like sorry. Echo, and we, I don't want to get blasted and completely ruin the podcast. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I got somehow, actually, maybe who knows? <laughs> hey, no, dude, we're just chilling, dude. Can we do a uh, a quick intro? Oh, oh hey sure. guys, um, I'm David Simonich. Um, I do vocals for Signs of the Swarm. Uh, my name is Bobby Crow. I do uh, drums for Sons of the Swarm. Uh, I'm Jeff Russo. I play guitar. Uh, my name is Mike Cassess. I'm the bassist for Sons of the Swarm. Wow. Yeah, uh, so you And then we got Young Ames over here, professional joint roller for us. He's rolling up all the doobies for the <laughs> evening for us to consume. That's that beautiful smell, dude. <laughs> so this is the first time we're actually smoking on, on this. Yeah, fucking. Oh, thank you. I, I'm glad it's that proper. it's you guys. It's proper, man. Death course high is here, baby. You know what I mean? Busting this bitch in. You know what I mean? Let's go. Yeah. Highest and heaviest. <laughs> well, not the heaviest. <laughs> I, don't know, I would beg to differ. Me and Zach were just talking about it. Like, damn, you guys are fucking hard, heavy as fuck, dude. I'm fucking appreciate it. Dude. Yeah, man. Yeah. I, I, was, I was a big fan. I was, I was listening to you guys at the gym, getting pumped. That's <laughs> insane, man. When, cool. When's this going to be released? Uh. I guess I'll go to that right now. So this will be released on Monday the 5th. So two days before the 7th. Okay, oh, cool. Wonderful. Yeah. I can't remember right there. Yeah. yeah. Be be best day to do it, Monday. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah, well, yeah I get shit, that. Fucking, well, the beans will be dropped by then. Fucking new song teaser and shit's going to be out fucking on the 29th. Really? Mm-hmm. You, got, you guys got, got the teasers ready? Yeah, got the teaser ready. Fucking, we're going to be announcing, uh, signing to Century Media. Wow. So now we're label mates. Officially, congratulations, dude! You got you guys deserve it for sure. We're Thank incredibly you. excited about it. Yeah, Central Media is getting all the great bands right now. Yeah, yeah, they're seriously picking up like they just picked up this all the heavy hitters. Yes, dude, or, it's like, crazy to see you guys come back too after all this time to Century. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, my, uh, Mike Gator was a big piece of that. You know, I uh, oh, shout yeah. out Gator man. Shout out, <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Gator man. You know, he, he pulled us in too. Yeah. He, he yeah. fucking he reeled us in. He's like, dude, I swear, he had to buy us. He had to buy us Korean barbecue yeah. in L.A., but he <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> he got us. It's like you know how Games? like it's like oh he's the Gator guy. Like yeah, like go get it, you know? Yeah, and like get her, you know what I mean? Like I don't know. I think it's just I think it's funny. He's know. he's a fucking lifer, man. I see him at shows all the time. He'll go to yeah. Chain Reaction all the time. I see him all small shows. Dude, he's uh, dude. He, he's always there. Is he, he coming to the Chain Reaction? He's always, no, he's at uh, some festival. Oh okay. Oh okay. yeah, right now there's a big fest in Vegas. Yeah, <laughs> a, oh, a big psycho. one. Psycho. Yeah, 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 that's what it is. Yep. So how Never does it been. feel for you to actually be a official member? I'm having a hard time. I've always had a hard time putting these things into words just because, you know, when I wake up in a van and I realize I'm in a new city or a venue I've never played and, you know, I've, I've gone around the world and I'm only 26. That's um, nuts, man. It's, it, it's incredibly fulfilling because, like, right before I joined the band, I, you know, I graduated college. I was working jobs and I just was really depressed. I wasn't, like, fulfilled. I wanted to do something that made me feel like I was like I was, you know, fulfilling a purpose. I'm saying that word a lot, but it's really the only word that really comes to mind. Um, and 
I knew when I, when I knew when I picked up a bass when I was 14 that it was something that I wanted to pursue and I would fight like hell to make it a career. Um, and it's really, really funny because I had just been fired from a job uh, when David texted me like literally the morning after I woke up to a text from David just said, what's up? And like I'd known Dave since before he joined Sons of the Swarm. I'd known him since in Providence and he oh, would wow. come into... If you remember Dave, BRGR in Cranberry, you yeah. come into the bar and I would bar back there and I'd shoot the shit with you. I'd be like, oh, dude, I remember like, how you doing, yada, yada, yada. Um, and knowing Dave, I know that he doesn't. He never starts a conversation with what's up. So I knew something was going on. <laughs> That's good. And, That's and I just good. texted back because I had gone to bed really early that night. I was bombed. I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, and, you know, I texted back. I was like, hey, man, I'm really sorry. Uh, I missed this text. I went to bed early last night. What's up? smoke some weed, smoke some cigarettes, try to take my mind off it. My phone goes off, and the text just says, oh, dude, it's no problem, but this has to say super low-key. Uh, I'm hitting you up to see if you're interested in auditioning to play bass for Signs of the Swarm. And I read it once, and it didn't click. I read it twice. It was like dial-up in my head, if you remember the sound. Oh, it yeah. just wasn't clicking. Yeah. And then it was like the microwave ding, and I started screaming, <laughs> like full blast, top of my voice. I woke up my roommates and everything because, <laughs> wow. like, I was so freaking Is excited. Is Mike dying right now? Holy shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, and I knew that when they I, – I knew that they would have hit up other people. I knew I could not have been the only person considered for the role. Um, so when Dave told me that what I had to do was um, film a playthrough of the song Malevolent Enslavement off of Vital Deprivation, uh, I was like, okay, bet – Send me the tabs. I played that since I had just gotten fired from a job. I had all the time in the world. It was actually incredibly lucky. Um, I played that song for maybe six hours that day. I hit up a buddy of mine in the area, and I was like, when are you available? I need you to shoot me a video. I need you to record this. And he's like, I, I, I can get you in day after tomorrow. And I said, cool. See you in two days. Um, so I played that song until my hands were raw. I went and shot the video. I got it over to Bobby and David that night. Um, and, you know, Bobby's like, yo, you killed this. And I was like, holy shit, I actually have a shot at this, you know? And a couple months go by. I'm not trying to push it. I'm not trying to punish, you know? I was just like, hey, here's some clips. Bobby would send me some more tabs. I would send them clips of me playing that music. Uh, and then sometime around June of 2021, Bobby texts me and he's like, hey, are you going to be available for a tour in September? And that's when I knew that I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, I'm actually going to get this tryout spot. Um, and I said, yeah. I, I was like, I, I don't care what's going on. I'm going to make it happen. Um, so the three tours I did, the, the headliner, then the tour with Born of Osiris, and then the tour with Fit for an Autopsy, those were really my vetting process. You know, a headline tour, a mm -hmm. shorter support tour, and then a really long full U.S. And then not long after the Fit tour ended, we had a, a Skype meeting, the four of us, and that's when they offered me the full-time position. Wow. I, remember, I don't remember what we did, but we fucked with them pretty hard. Well, I passed out. I passed out. That's not during the writing session. Yeah, on so writing yeah it was a writing session, <laughs> and I had been so tired that day. I was literally laying down. I, I was listening. I was so content on listening. I was like, I'm just going to shut my eyes for a bit. And next thing I know, my phone's vibrating. Hey, man, we got to talk. I always wake up to a phone call. I always wake up to my phone buzzing. And my phone's buzzing, and I pick it up, and it's Dave, and I'm just like, oh, shit. I fucked up. Um... And he's like, yo, you fell asleep. I'm like, no, I didn't. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm good, bro. I'm right bro, here. I was literally like, Mike, you got the job. And he's like, <laughs> just like straight yeah, past that. Yeah, I was like, snoring. <laughs> so I, I rejoined the Skype meeting and I'm super apologetic. I was like, oh man, so I'm so sorry, one. guys. I'm really, really sorry. Um, and they're like, no, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. By the way, do you want to be the guy? <laughs> and I was just like, what do you mean? <laughs> it was like a beat and I was like what are, you, what are you talking about and they're like do you want the job like this is us offering you the full time job and I'm like this has to be a joke right like I want to make totally sure you're not fucking with me and they're like no this is 100% serious do you want the job and I was like yes and they're like okay you got the job and I, I remember it was February 20th it was just a week before my birthday so <laughs> really birthday cool, present. Really cool but I couldn't talk about it because you know we had so much going on that we couldn't make the announcement until Chaos and Carnage had ended so like you know, oh yeah, yeah. I couldn't tell anybody. I could tell. I mean, I told a couple people. I told my parents. I told my girlfriend. You told me. I, well, yeah. I'll say, <laughs> yeah, I told you. I could trust you guys. Obviously, being being you know professionals, but like I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell a lot of people. Like fans at the merch table. I couldn't really oh, yeah, tell. Yeah. 
you know, the average concert goer who would stop me and be like, yo, that was sick. Can I grab a picture? Are you in the band? And I'd be I have to be like, nah, wink, wink. I'm just filling in right now. Yeah. Um, Wait, you're winking at people? No, <laughs> no. You know what I'm talking about. No, like, I'm just like, that's, yeah, that's see, fucking sick, dude. But, um, Congrats, dude. Thank you. Big, thank you. It, it's really deal. been a big dream come true for me because, like I said, when I was 14, I picked up bass and I knew this is what I wanted to do with my life. So the most satisfying part is the I told you so's. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm sure, like, everyone at this room can, you know, not just Dave, Bobby, Jeff, but you as well, like, when you decided you wanted to pursue this as a career, especially with such an extreme genre of music. Yeah. A lot of people were like, well, you better have a backup plan, yeah. which is basically just a nice way of saying... That's we not don't a think... real job. Exactly, which is <laughs> just yeah, a nice yeah. way of saying, we don't think you're going to succeed. So when I, finally got, when I finally got the job, actually, it was very shortly after I got the full-time position where we signed the contract with Century Media. So that was actually one of the first things I did upon joining the band, was wow. sign a record label with Century Media Records, which still blows my mind. Uh, and then tour the United Kingdom and Ireland. Um, and then playing a whole month sold out with you guys, you know, who have been pillars in Deathcore for close to 20 years, maybe not, maybe more at this point. Oh, Appreciate yeah. That. You know, you. Um, it's just a big, it's just a whole bunch of, I fucking told you. It's like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Revenge is the best. But, yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, feel, like I'm, I feel like I'm talking a no, lot. No, no, it's so. great. I mean... So, so, so you guys pretty much gave him like three tours, of kind of like a like a tester. You know, how how is he when he's high and drunk? Is he? Is he That's the one. Yeah, <laughs> we had to do a lot of like background research too. I had yeah. to hit up like friends of his and be like, "Hey, how is he?" We were very thorough. Yeah, these, especially these days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got to be, and you know, we've known him for a long time, so yeah, worked out. So, so are but, you guys still based out of Pittsburgh? Yes, sir. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, so Bobby lives in West Virginia. Okay, but but yeah, Dave, myself, and Jeff, we all live within thirty minutes of each other. It's easier yeah, to oh, say cool. Pittsburgh. None of us actually live in the city of Pittsburgh. But of I course, live in Cranberry, it's like thirty minutes out. Dave lives in what's well, the town? Actually, Cambridge. Kinda, well, technically, you're in Cannesburg now. Yeah, yeah, which is basically well, in Pittsburgh. I, can say that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, hey, I, I just talked to myself. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, we're all pretty close. Do you straight up Pittsburgh heavy shit, dude? Hey, uh. Bobby, are you the founder? No, oh, what, um, what? I, I guess I was kind of in like the original lineup, but even before we put out our first album ever, yeah, the the lineup had changed like three times. Okay, so the band formed in 2014 at like well, band was being formed over years before that. Oh, um, I see. Got from it. People going to school together and stuff, and then when like the name was decided on like the year. In 2014, when we started playing shows and stuff, um, there were a couple lineup changes during the writing process of the first album, and then we released that album. Over the course between that and the second album, there were some other lineup changes. Yeah. Um, and but yeah, I've been in the band aside from one month in 2016 uh, that I took a hiatus. I guess technically that meant I was not in the band. Uh, yeah, I've been in the band since it founded. So. Wow. So Paul, I would quick. say, <laughs> uh, that's quick. I would say longer than eight years. Yeah, it's eight years. This by, huh? It's, it's eight years nuts. this year. Yeah, it was, uh, the first show was. Is this one um, that has tobacco in it? Where is the tobacco? <laughs> oh, oh, where, where is, is yeah, the that's, tobacco? That's something I need. Mike, you got some tobacco on you, buddy. I mean, yeah, you, you, could, you, could, black, you could break up a cigarette real quick. <laughs> yeah, throw <laughs> it yeah. 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 We're just, like, I'm indulging not, right in front of him. And, like, I'm, not, I'm not picky at all, dude. <laughs> this does not imply sponsorship of Marlboro. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Although, hey, just a heads up. I mean... <laughs> but no, uh, <laughs> I, I probably they, smoked cigarettes. I probably smoked 10 cigarettes in, in my life. They call me... Yeah. The, they call really? me the dirty awesome. muncher in Australia. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because like well, that's what they call chain smokers. Yeah, yeah, because like that's their that's their colloquialism for for cigarettes is dirty. Um, and Dave and I, um, we were both fiending for nicotine because oh, cigarettes were fifty dollars so, a pack. Yeah, dude, yeah. it was ridiculous. Like I couldn't believe that like their taxes are like that or over there for shit like that. I was like, what the? F you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I was like, eh, I'm just going to go buy a vape. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. yeah, dude. I mean, they're, Australia is very expensive. When you go down there, you're like, oh, it my, is. everything's it like, is. it's like, yeah, okay, I'm not going to buy this like I thought I was going to buy. Yeah. And the flights now, too, is it's fucking crazy, dude. We're seeing, like, tribal plans go down there. Mm -hmm. The flights are ridiculous, dude. 
Oh my goodness, yeah. we're going there in March. Yeah. That's, that's my favorite place to tour ever. When you go to Australia and you do like like the Asian territories and stuff like that, mm-hmm. I, I, something about it, I love those shitty flights. We just we just ate so many L's, bro. <laughs> we, yeah. we have like PTSD of the, the flights right now. Just yeah. oh, like we lost our shit. Yeah. Like, oh, going no. to Singapore, we lost our hair for like eight days. Yeah, bro. Like you guys want to talk about that? I've talked yeah. a lot. Someone else can <laughs> just do the rundown of that hell. But yes, let's talk about that. Uh, well, basically, uh, we took a flight from New Zealand to Singapore, mm. yeah. and somewhere in Australia, in a layover, our shit didn't make it onto the plane or something with a cha- with our uh, yeah with our layover because we had like, no stuff, time. Yeah. yeah, so we showed up and we were missing a bunch of shit. It was like fifteen thousand dollars worth of our gear, pretty much. Yeah, right. right. And um, we hunted it down for like a week, and then we were playing in the Philippines like over a week later, and it just happened to be at the Philippines airport. Our gear did it. Showed up. I had an air tag and one of the things. And said it was in the country, and we were like, yo, fuck, we're 20 minutes from the airport right Let's now. Go. We just got in a car and just went straight to the airport. Had to spend like two or three hours going through there, f- arguing with people. Um, they wouldn't let me bring in our tour guide, translator, promoter, you know, all the, just our friend that was there. They wouldn't let her come with us uh, in to speak to them. So it was a nightmare, but we ended up getting it back um, like a few days before we flew home. We were pretty much like, well, fuck, hopefully it shows up in the States eventually but yeah. we ended up getting it back so wow. we didn't miss a single show though yeah, yeah. shout yeah. out to within shout destruction out to within. yeah Fucking big big w yeah. on within destruction we yeah, didn't miss they... a single show they let us borrow their quad cortex so jeff and i could patch our tones in dude cause... jeff like built like scenes oh. in like fucking like i was 20 scrambling minutes. yeah i'm scrambling <laughs> trying insane, to dude. trying to build all the patches and stuff and like make a like pretty much a base rig in it for him too so it was <laughs> Holy crap, dude. We would have been screwed, though. Yeah, it worked out. We ended up yeah. our shit. We played. We missed a damn show. We were ready to go home, though. Yeah, we were <laughs> yeah. Defeated, bro. After <laughs> we all were that defeated. shit, we were like, you know what? Like, and then the show we actually played in the Philippines was uh, our biggest gig we've ever had. And we didn't expect it. To, we thought it'd be a couple hundred people, and like 5,000 people showed up. Oh, my And goodness. we didn't have any of our gear at the time or anything. We were just like, all right, let's hope for the best. Wow. And, well, we lucked out, too, because that, uh, that, uh, your same kit. The yeah, they have a nice kit. pro kit. Usually house kits are there pretty shot. Right. It's actually a really great house kit. You're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's actually a really great kit. And, uh, but yeah, it's that was a good time. Mike's face. Andy. My you face. Did what did I do? <laughs> you hand me a joint, you're just like, <laughs> what was I? Oh, I don't know, dude. You can't get a moment's peace, I swear to God. So, you guys, uh, I'm glad to see you guys here because apparently you guys blew a tire. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. last night. Yes, yeah, that yeah. sucks. He's the worst. It was a short drive. We got super lucky. Everything worked out. Yeah, we like we're feeling like our van like skipping, and we were like, yeah, we, we need to pull the fuck over. We pulled over, and we're like, all oh, our shit looks fine, and then like started pulling up, and they're like, oh no, it's the back tire of the van. Yeah, had like a big bubble in the tire. Dude, yeah. that was, was crazy, like to, though. It was all good. We pulled over, we stopped, and we're sitting there just waiting for a while because uh, actually, Upon a Burning <laughs> Body came by to help us out, so shout out to them. Oh, cool. Yeah. They helped us out a lot. We might have missed that show. Um, and we were just standing there waiting, and I guess the tire just kept expanding, and we didn't notice. We were standing right around it, just looking at it. And it fucking exploded just while we were sitting there. <laughs> it was like a gun, it shot. Like a gun went Yo, off. Yo, yeah, yeah, it was like in the movies when the, when the grenades go off. We were all just like, Yo, what the fuck? See, I was, was sitting in the van, and I was like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah, we were like, oh shit, Alex, you thought somebody got yeah, shot. Yeah, well, <laughs> so again, the day's like, is everybody okay? Is somebody hurt? <laughs> it's also worth mentioning, before we left, you know, and the tire gave us problems, um, you know, because we were afraid we were going to go through a border checkpoint uh, in El Paso. Yeah. So we wanted to obviously remove anything illicit from ourselves. Between us, upon bringing body involved with Denia, we smoked maybe, a, you know, two ounces of marijuana. So we're all there <laughs> on the side of the highway. <laughs> Except for Jeff. Like, Jeff. Jeff don't yeah, smoke. I'm the only one who doesn't Jeff smoke, so smoke. I'm just like, hmm. But between the three of us and our crew, we're high as kites. And we're just like, well, fuck, what do we do? The craziest thing to me, though, you know what I just realized, is that despite all the BS in the last, like, you know, since touring has come back because of COVID, um, we haven't missed a single show. We haven't missed one. We haven't dropped. I I have missed one show, and that was because I had COVID. So I I didn't perform. I, I, I set that one out. I was talking to our merch guy, Duber. I don't think since you've been in the band in 2018. Yeah, we've never missed a show we've since I've been in yeah. the band. Science has, n- has not dropped a show since yeah. 2018. Yeah, we played one, one show without bass and one show instrumental. 
other than that, yeah. though, like we haven't dropped anything. Yeah, it's fucking crazy, honestly. So good job. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> fucking, I'm good so job. bummed I didn't play that last show on that decapitated horse. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my voice was so fucked though. I've dude, never felt like that before. In my get life. that bunk lung. Yeah. What, yeah, yeah. What was wrong, dude? Fucking, I just got bunk lung. <laughs> uh, like, Boy got yeah. sick. Like. I just got sick and like I thought I was like staying away from everybody because it wasn't COVID because we were testing ourselves daily. Yeah. Because we were fucking scared we weren't going to be able to go home. You know what I mean? Like, you know how it is whenever you go over there, you plan for an X amount of time. Yeah. And then fucking whenever it's over, then you go home. You know what I mean? You don't plan to be there for an extra two weeks to quarantine. You know what I mean? So. Yep. If that happens, you need to be able to, like, change your plans. You know what I mean? Fucking, so we're testing every day and stuff. So it wasn't that fucking, but it was, it was bad. Fucking, like, my talking voice was fine. And then, like, anytime I go to, like, talk to it past a certain level, it would just, eh, it was just like, eh. I was like, nope. <laughs> I'm not even, I was like, I am not getting mean, dude. Fuck that. <laughs> well, no, like, that I, you don't want to, like, like, hurt I yourself do. either. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, that too, that too. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of yeah. a thing about being a singer that we don't understand. Like, man, like if you can't, if if something's wrong, you can't really play through that. Right. That's what I'm saying, dude. Like, you can't borrow somebody's vocal cords for a night. You know yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it happened to Eddie on on his last run. You yeah. Know, fucking... Sometimes you can't like you can't you can't force it out because then you're ruined like the rest of the whole. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's better too. to just sit down for the day, recover, and then. Just as sad as that was, it, you know, that day was legendary, though. Yeah, dude. It's fun. <laughs> Honestly, it was, um, it, was, it, was, it was fun. Um, it reminded me personally a lot of uh, of the show that was thrown for Mitch's memory, you yeah, know, yeah. with a lot of guest vocalists, and I was kind of like, because I, I remember when that happened, I was in high school, and I was really bummed out hearing that news, and I remember seeing all the footage of all the different vocalists who came out to, you know, honor Mitch's legacy, and I thought to myself, that must have been the craziest motherfucking show, and in a sense of speaking, we, you know, we had a bunch of vocalists come together to, to help again, and it was just really, really cool to see everyone doing their part, you yeah. know? Yeah. Crushing these songs, especially now, like we were talking about on Chaos and Carnage, there's a whole other wave of deathcore bands coming. Yeah, and it's nuts, man. Yeah, right. it's like it really has a resurgence, and like all the dudes that are on that tour, all people we've known forever, and grow up listening to you guys, see our friends. Getting to see our friends do the shit right. is like... It's, it's, it's such like, a full circle moment for yeah, so many exactly. people. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, mean, I remember I was, I was watching... Uh, sorry to put you on a spot. I was watching you do, do a cover. Uh, unanswered? <laughs> yeah. Right, that was sick, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's, good, it's good video, man. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you were so stoked to be able to play that one. Dude, though. literally, I, yeah. like, I was you like, were... yo, can I do it? And you guys were like, yeah. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Of course. You remember the sound check? Oh, it was, it was great. Mark looks at me and goes, you know what I answered? I was like, yeah. <laughs> You're like, Give no. <laughs> for for like anyways. two months up to the tour, he's like, yo, wouldn't it be so crazy if I could like play that song with them or something sometime? <laughs> and we're like, yeah, dude, shit happens. You never know. Like, create... And that's crazy shit happens all the time when we're on tour, you know? The cool shit, and we're like, I don't know. It does, man. Yeah. How did, how did you join the band? Um, they actually contacted me. Um, I was at work, uh, and I got the phone call from the man, our old manager, Jake Short, and he was like, hey, um, the vocalist quit the band. Um, you want to fill in for these couple of tours? And I was like, I'm not doing it unless I get the opportunity to be the full time guy, because like I would have had to quit my job. I, mm -hmm. I was like, I was like a welding foreman and stuff. I had some stuff pretty sealed out for me. Like I was making some good money and shit. And um, then I had three days to make the decision after they told me that they would like let me be the guy if I killed the tours. You know what I mean? They're like, if you kill the tours and you do a video and people accept you and it, wow. and like it, it seems good, then like we got this. You know what I mean? And then, um, so uh, I had what it was like eleven days after I made the decision to learn the set. Yeah, the day the tour started eleven days after the day we called you because yeah. we we found out about this less than two weeks before the tour was supposed to start that we didn't have a vocalist anymore. Yeah. So oh we really? Started, yeah. So we started scrambling. Looking, we're like, this was our first time doing a 
not a full U.S. tour, but like a we were doing eighty days with a couple like a week off or two here and there wow. in between. With um, that's a lot, dude. Yeah, it was with that's ingested, and it, the whole thing was with ingested um, over like two different tours. Wow, and. Uh, we were like, man, we have to make this happen. It's the first. It's, that's the shit that we'd been fighting for. And Jester was one of those bands that we were like, we want to tour with them really bad. And yeah, he came through with eleven fucking days. We were practicing in my basement at the time. Um, it was insane, dude. Just like to see from that to this is some shit for sure. Yeah, still a lot of room to four years now. Four yeah, the, years, the band yeah. has existed now longer with Dave in it than before. He wasn't. Which is crazy. Yeah, it seems like each member that that you got really you, you kept finding like like your sound you just kept you just kept finding it yeah and on uh, and your recent record that's like there, there, there's something about that one even like even the artwork was like was like the with like the books in like the face and the face is looking up and there's like that it's tobacco oh this one's a tobacco one are you sure oh, dude oh yeah here we go yeah. baby yeah. and right, now we're going downhill now uh, <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> But yeah, like the whole like album art thing was actually like kind of put together from a uh, bunch of like concepts from all the songs mashed together. Yeah. And um, kind of just like gave the idea to the guy and was like, hey, we want something like this. And we got like the rough version of it. And it looked like oh, a shit. zombie with like a book in its face. You know what yeah. I mean? It, it kind of does, huh? Yeah, it, was, it, it looked way different beforehand. Um, but now, um, I'm honestly stoked on it. Like, I, I, we just wanted something different because, yeah, like, with yeah. being on uh, like, extre- like a brutal death metal label, like it's almost entirely brutal death metal. A lot of the album art is like rather similar. It's yeah, just it's that kind of it's a lot of that, the painting or like some kind of you know figure to focus on. Yeah, and we were just like, there were a lot of release, cool, good releases from our friends coming out on the label at the same time too. So we were like, there's, they would always have a, uh, you know, like a full photo list of all the album covers yeah, like the cover like photo and stuff short, like, yeah. with, like the months and stuff and we were just oh, like wow. man how can we make ours look different and we were like let's just do something completely different than anybody else is gonna do so that way it doesn't just look like another yeah. Death stands yeah. out a little you know bit what I mean? so it is very different for us but we were like fuck it it's just something a little more eye catching than it is you know. no it's great you guys naturally did that you guys bands are afraid to do it you guys gotta do something that sticks out yeah, it might uh, and it might feel like a little bit different, but sometimes it sticks. And, th- and this record cover for you guys, I think, sticks. See, like you know? my favorite part about the record is the back of it, and not a lot of people like really like showcase the back of it too much. But how the art artist like literally like shows the figure like sideways with our logo embedded into the hand oh, is cool. like the hardest shit ever. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my goodness! Okay. What is the name of the record? I I I, I see it and I, I want to say, uh, Up Soul Beer. Yeah, That's exactly. Oh, it's it. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, Nailed it. it. Who uh, who came up with that title? Actually, Bobby did. Bobby. Well, he hit me with something similar, and um, well, it was like an idea, and we started thinking about names, and a lot of it was, I was finding other because especially metal, like so much shit has been done. So I'm like trying yeah. to make sure that we the name isn't too similar to something but we wanted to kind of have this vibe and we just started looking up synonyms in different languages and stuff and just found it and thought it was cool and yeah, uh, like it was like as soon as we saw it like yeah. we were just like yo this That's is it, it. Well, we, we like oh, the like, idea of like absolute yeah. like this just kind of like this uh this, yeah this is like defining a, a move in sound for us like because vital deprivation was kind of a move but we didn't quite we liked it we didn't feel like it didn't hit as heavy as we wanted to as the, the other albums yeah so this had a lot more of that it mixed in with kind of like the faster death metal style too but we didn't want it to be too close to like kubicon record or uh mm-hmm. i'm sure there's plenty of other ones that have the same that so we just tried to find something a little different but ended up on that and we were like this is cool this is it yeah i was actually <clears throat> oh excuse me i was actually um really privileged to be able to listen to the album before I was made a full-time member because my first tour was the headlining tour in support of the record actually before it released. I remember, you know, I'd already been confirmed to do the tour, so Bobby's like, yeah, fuck it, may as well let you listen to the record. Because yeah, um, we're going to be playing some songs. Yeah, we, played, yes. we played the bulk of Absolvir on the headlining tour. I think it was maybe like, what, seven songs off yeah. of the record? Yeah, it must You know, mo- a, a <coughs> oh, boy. the one with the tobacco in it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a good few of those Dave likes it, it straight. Yeah, I'll 
I'll take it straight. Was, <laughs> what, what, you guys found a title that uh, sticks out. I was like, what? What is that word? And plus, yeah. on top of that, it's high in the alphabetical order as mm. well. You know what I'm saying? Because if it goes by album <laughs> title, it's higher up in the like listings. The catalog, you know yeah. I mean? yeah. That's some smart shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so basically, we're gonna rip it off. Okay, guys, our next record has to start with the A. A A. It's called A A. <laughs> num- honestly, numbers is the way to go. <laughs> Just always numbers. One, first, number one, one and A. Negative one. One A. Uh, my. Uh, my old uh, iPod had Negative One by uh, Mudvayne. I had like 60,000 songs, but every time I turn my fucking iPod on, it's Negative oh, One because wow. that's the first fucking song. <laughs> Dude, that record is ridiculous. Oh, it's absolutely insane. I've like rediscovered it again as I've maybe going 10 years without listening to it. And uh, I'm like, fuck, man. They really had something. It's special. Yeah. When, when you re, re, re-hear OD50, you're like, oh, what shit. the I'm fuck sorry, are the guys doing? Forgetting. Especially your bass player. I might, I might take a minute. What was that? That's the tobacco one? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I, I don't want to get too blasted. So basically, you guys... So you guys put in tobacco in, in this joint. Me, I, got, I, got, I got plenty more, man. <laughs> you, got, you got five my, there? What the fuck my, are you doing? My man's working overtime. Right <laughs> yeah, we got, we got... What was that? Two more on deck. We got a third coming. You guys are out of control. He's and, a madman. Uh, man. Dude, still man. All don't you remember? Three passes? I do. So what... Oh, thank you. What's the writing process like for, especially for this past record? Because I see you guys keep rolling and enjoying some. I'm just wondering. Well, this is something guys. I love to talk about because we don't Let's get do to talk about it. Let's right. do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go in, dude. No, we do a lot of, um, most of our writing. Well, when we brought Jeff into the band, it was during the pandemic. And, like, I had, co- had COVID at one point. I don't know if anybody else ever did, but we were all trying not to get together too much because of that. Yeah. Um, so we started doing Skype and just. We would have my setup kind of be the home base, right. mm-hmm. screen share. We'd all could see each other's faces of cameras and uh, just set a microphone right in front of me that they could hear me through and they could hear the music through. And mm. we'd just vibe shit out. And then he could send me ID. He would track stuff. He runs the same shit as me pretty much. And we just send it back and forth through the chat on uh, Skype, drag it into the session fuck with it and we would just yeah, do that for build songs front to back we did that whole album in almost like three months yeah um, like there were some ideas in, coming into it but pretty much from the time we were like alright we need to like we need to actually down. write a record yeah that's like literally yeah. what I, <laughs> so we, we were like we're like we we're, were like thinking like oh yeah we're, like we don't know like what's gonna happen we didn't want to like put it out too soon with like the pandemic and everything because we wouldn't be able to tour with it you know, you know yeah. what I mean there's like so many factors at play there that yeah. It was like nerve wracking to like think about writing a record, you know what I mean? And um, then whenever it was like, okay, we really need to do this, yeah. and then that's whenever we like cracked down and actually started writing. It was winter time, and because of the the pandemic, we were like we were all working shit jobs for the most part. I was delivering pizza, and I, was I would come home. Like ear molds, wow. yeah. I was working pizza like from noon to midnight pretty much every day, and then I would come home and hop on the computer until like five six in the morning. And then if they were free, on every weekend we would all get together, and then we'd meet up a little, like, every now and then we'd meet up together. But for the most part, it was all on Skype, yeah. and then we went straight to the studio. Well, we, we got together for a week at Dave's house, and we tracked all tracked the guitars. Tracked, yeah, everything bass, consistent. Everything we tracked all the, yeah. except Shout for drums. Tristan, Tristan Donaldson. Yeah, yes. and also Shane Meyer. Yeah, um, Shane, and Shane Meyer. Yeah, That's Super Mayer's Audio. Stuff. Yeah, he, uh, he did drums and vocals for us. So we do pretty much all the string recording ourselves, um, just because the control you have over that right. yeah. is insane um, and then drums kind of have to go somewhere good and I can't do that for my house so <laughs> we were like we'll go somewhere for that in vocals yeah you definitely need the drums are the, are the one thing you need a drum room it's yeah exactly that's, probably yeah. The, that's like the only thing so yeah. you guys were writing via Skype mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yep still are yeah, yeah. yeah. wow it, it works, works. Yeah. it's surprisingly organic too because like being able to jam out ideas and say, how do you feel about this? You know, I mean, we can, like, all kind of actually, like, collectively, bounce ideas off yeah. of each other, like, You can literally. mute yourself. You, so it's not like when you're in the same room with somebody just right. making noise and everyone's like... Yeah, I mean, lighter. Ooh, hey, Dave, man. Oh, all right, right in front of me. Yeah. You know, when you're sitting in the same room and, like, your drummer's making noise and then you're trying to play a riff or somebody else is trying to play a riff and it's just, like, a mess of noise Right, it sounds like Guitar Center. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can just mute yourself and fucking... You know, and then be like, hey, how do you like this? Do you think this will work here? And like, we can kind of all and everyone's in the critique comfort it. Of you journey. literally said what I was just about to say. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, that contributes so much to the creative headspace. Yeah, being in your so everyone's in our space, and right? Which is nice. It's it's I 
I do, like I do kind of miss the organicness of being in a room like when I was younger and just like playing drums and somebody playing guitar. But for like the kind of music that we're making and like the back the one. depth we want to put into it, mm -hmm. it's. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's very easy. It makes it so much easier. Because we get to actually focus really on all the intricate things that right. we put in there. Like all like, yeah. like literally like steel hitting on each other, adding fucking right. reverb and dipping out all the fucking... Yeah, it's, it's not just shit. like, oh, here's like, a guitar riff, here's a drum yeah. idea. It's like, what are we going to do with this section of the How song make to make it get the vibe shit. that Dude, we want? Our song Totem, um, we recorded that album in my basement, actually. Um, but yeah, the song Totem was... There's, um, sledgehammer noises and it's just me hitting shit off the pipes in my basement like, nice I'm liking it so we do all <laughs> kinds of shit like that in my house it was fun it was different compared to the album we did before that we went to a studio for 10 days we spent a fuck ton of money it was cool it was yeah. a very good experience yeah, it was a great experience yeah but we, we after that we were like fuck we don't need to do that you know what I mean yeah. like we get a better product just like putting a little bit more effort in on our end, really. So, but. like, the record before was at a studio, mm -hmm. and this one wasn't exactly, but it, oddly enough... It was about a 50-50, oh. you know? This, this, this more recent me. one sounds better, in my, in my opinion. It's weird. Oh, well, thanks. It's cool, the drums and, and the bass. Tones. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We, yeah, we definitely enjoy that album a lot. Like, when we were done with it, we were like, fuck, we're actually proud of this. Like, yeah. really proud of this. I actually got to track some guitar on the record, dude. One oh my note. God. The last <laughs> gave, fucking note gave, on the record. We gave him one oh. note. Give him an open. <laughs> and he crushed it. Yep. Yeah. First take. <laughs> he was like, can you need me to do it again? I'm like, no, I'll just stretch it out. <laughs> <laughs> Congra congratulations. And Jeff, you came in in 2021, right? Uh, officially? Now? Really? It was 2020, but officially 2021. Yeah, officially yeah. 2021, but um, <clears throat> they brought me in to like, kind of Help with the writing process. Water. Does anybody need anything? Uh, I'm okay. Uh, I'm fine, actually, yeah. I'm good. Um, but originally I got the offer to uh, jump in as a touring guitar player because um, their guitar player at the time didn't really want to tour anymore. Yeah. Um, so that's how I initially kind of got my foot in the door. Me and Dave also used to be in a band together, so like we had already worked together for years prior to that because um, the band he was in before he joined Sons, that was me and his band uh, in Providence. But... Um, yeah, I came in uh, and started learning a lot of the material and stuff that I needed to know for like their tour plans. But then like the pandemic happened, obviously that kind of like threw everything kind of up in the air, and I didn't really know what was going on for a little while. And then yeah. they were kind of like, "Hey, like we need somebody to you know kind of jump in on writing duties now too. Um, so would you be interested in joining as a full time member?" I was like, "Absolutely, let's go." And that's kind of where I got my foot in the door. We started writing, see how it went, and it kind of clicked pretty well so here we are <laughs> sounded like it clicked yeah it's you uh jeff you debuted with the collection right yeah that's the oh, okay that was the yeah, first song i had the opportunity to write on that was like i think that was kind of like my real tryout for the band was this one just us, um, I guess. how i could contribute to that so had a few few sections of that song that i wrote and there was other sections that i was like hey what if we did this what if we did that like uh, threw a guitar solo in there too, so it was, I don't know. It was crazy, that was the first song, uh, time that we, well, we had all these ideas for guest features for that right. song, and it was just happened to be like, two of our favorite bands, and I know especially Jeff, yeah. so he's like, yo, this is my first song. Yeah. And we had uh, Matt from Kubla Matt Con from Kubla song, Con, yeah. And Nick from um, Molotov, Molotov yeah. Very right. cool. And, it's, yeah. and also, that was a very big, like, um, genre boundary for right. us, to get yeah. pull, like metalcore and like OG deathcore, into our music you right. know it was like yeah a, it was a big opportunity so yeah, that, i was stoked that we were able to get nick to kind of come out the darkness for yeah a minute, you know <laughs> me too i mean like we were just kind of like spitballing too like oh like what if we just got these people to do it and then we hit him up and they're like yeah let's go and so it was like, I was like damn okay <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> i guess i gotta write this part around his vocals now because yeah. like we actually were like overreaching we felt right, like we're like yeah oh, these two's not gonna work. And then, never know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Sound of the part, and they're like, Mike let's knows go. that, and they never <laughs> know. So. Yeah, exactly. You gotta shoot your shot. I guess I'll ask a dumb question. Can I, mean, I, can I join the band? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, that's not exactly how it happened. I, I just I, said, hey, if you guys ever decide that you yeah, want you somebody, you know, through. think about me. <laughs> at the time, that's cool, that's at cool. the time, they actually said no. It was six months between when I shot my shot and they texted me. Yeah, so I really like, no. so changes. We missed yeah. out on a bass player on stage. Yeah, I really like this. We've been a four-piece now for a while, like, Single guitar bass. And 
this is the way. Yeah, <laughs> it, I like it, it a lot. It, works. it just works. Yeah, a yeah. four piece is definitely like your guys' thing. It's mm. Jeff. It sounds like you've been in a band a long time. <laughs> it's crazy how uh, you uh, you go into like this this album. Yeah, it sounds like you guys have been very cohesive for a long time, but. Dude, right. it's crazy, right? Well, yeah, I think what, Skype, I think so, a lot yeah. of it. I think a lot of it too is like me and Dave haven't been being in a band together before. Yeah. Like we kind of we gel already. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and me and Bobby, I think we you know we talk about music a lot, so I feel like we have a lot of the same influences. So we're like always on the same page. Like, oh, let's do this or that, and we're always both like really into the idea. So I think it just makes it super easy for us to write together. Yeah, so most dope. of the time. When one of us says something, somebody else has already worked right, on it. Right, exactly. Like, <laughs> we're like way ahead yeah. of you. Like, what if we did this? He's like, yep, already ahead of you. And he hits play, and it's like, oh, that's perfect. You know? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, we have a good thing going. That's sick. For for all you guys, uh, like, what were... Because influences for me were different. I'm curious what were your influences to write an album like this. Dude, oh, so many. Yeah, I mean, so many, honestly. But Give like, me some bands, dude. Well, it's weird, because, uh, like... Okay, I guess we have a lot of the same favorite bands. Like we all like really fucking love like Deftones and like we all grew up listening to Deftones. And of course, Gojira, like Mishuga. pretty much yeah, Mashuga, like all these major <laughs> just, sick ass Jersey, oh, yeah. like it's legacy so bands. But I think um, I don't know. We just kept saying we literally just kept saying like, how can we make this sound huge? Yeah, we you wanted know? like a we, massive sound. Yeah, like, that was. We didn't really care if, like we if it was so much heavy or so much this or that. We we're just like if that's something that sounds like ridiculous, like you hear and you're like, yeah, that's insane. That's pretty much all we were going for. And then everything else just kind of, ha kind of happens naturally. And once you add vocals to it, especially with a recognizable voice like Dave's, yes, he does. It, it, brings, it always kind of brings that sound together. So, yeah, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, they're different. their answer is actually a little different than mine. Any of the bands I had been in before joining Signs, uh, the reason I would end up leaving them is because there wasn't really a lot of activity going on. So yeah. I never really got the chance to participate in a lot of writing. Um, so they already have a, a flow which I'm trying to emulate and I'm trying to approach things like seeing as how future Signs of the Swarm releases will feature me on bass, I have this opportunity now to really leave my own mark. Uh, and I. I I kind of want to approach it in a way that's similar to my favorites, but also my own, you know? I'd like to, in the future, establish an identity as, you know, my own bass player, yeah. so. Yeah, I think that's everybody. That's yeah. just like the goal yeah. as a musician, how to make, how to define your voice in totally. a, in a, like any setting, you know? Yeah. Like Someone tell like, me if I'm rambling, because like, this weed has <laughs> hands, dude. You were, at, you were at, I don't know if you know this, but you're actually at the perfect platform to do it on and talk <laughs> yeah, <laughs> talk as long as you want dude. there's no time limit there's no, there's no censorship I, I don't care you gotta talk about whatever you want oh, yeah, if it happens to get demonetized that, that's fine too I don't <laughs> talked care about, you talked about every band that comes in here leaving their mark like on the room <laughs> so I think like, ours is just gonna be <laughs> resin <laughs> <laughs> or that future bands will come in here like yo let's like blaze yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, you guys are probably leading more of, of, of a scent <laughs> 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 a good, good vibe and a scent Especially that, that that shit is green. What the fuck, dude? Yeah, I think the... Uh, <laughs> Where'd you get that? Um, some of it from Arizona and some of it from here. Yeah. Um, so you had it delivered. Yeah, yeah I did. That's so crazy, man. Yeah, Jeff was I was doing, shooting a uh, playthrough with yeah. Uh, Fortin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and fucking, Down like, the road. They took forever. But <laughs> 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 really I got it, show. though. Yeah. Yeah, if I get the delivery to California, that. dude. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying Beautiful. to think back to like the album though. Like when we were writing, we were listening to a lot of. Uh, oh, I was delivering pizza, so I was listening to music in my car, just like the best. I haven't listened to music like that in a long time because I was just doing other jobs or whatever, and so that just got me really inspired again. You see the lot of, space. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. For the first time in a minute, and mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to do a lot of effects like spend a lot of time working in the box of just trying to like make things sound instead of just like a lead guitar tone how to make it sound like a our band lead yeah. guitar tone. a lot of stuff yeah, too like great. taking a guitar and making it sound like not a guitar you know? yeah yeah we did so much Sick. of that like there's some of the songs have let's make this sound 60 like layers of noises the, yeah, that yeah. are just like not really an instrument anymore <laughs> yeah they start as an instrument this becomes it's like noise. take jeff swift straight into the sunset yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean it's not, it sounds awesome you guys you guys are definitely finding something i was curious what you guys are listening to because i mean it's fucking ridiculous heavy 
I mean, this is heavy. Um, this is heavy. Like recently, like, I've been listening to, uh, like, No Face, No Case. That shit is, like, absurd, dude. They, like, <laughs> they, like straight ass beater. It's, it's obnoxiously <laughs> heavy. Yeah. yeah. No Face, No Case? No, no face, face, No, no case. case. Yeah. yeah. That, that's hard. Dude, literally, like, they got, like, fucking, like, the air horns and shit in there, and, like, the shit's <laughs> Hype hard. Hype beast. Hi- yeah, it's also, super so heavy. Hard, also, we've been touring with a lot of great bands. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. Well, this, I guess this was kind of before that, or after that time, but we've been touring with a lot of great bands that have been very inspiring the last year. We've been on the road almost nonstop, and basically every band we've been with is amazing, and yeah. there's always something. Like, whether you, I guess, realize it or not, you're taking that in. You right. Know what I mean, all, yes. all the time. Yeah. And seeing how the crowd reacts to how it makes you feel. Yeah. We do a lot of that of just like, it's more about like the vibe, you know? Right. Yeah. No, I mean, I remember near the end of the Fit Tour, because that was like, what, five weeks, you know? Yeah. In the last like week and a half, we were on our own just going and jamming Far From Heaven because of that intro. You know, like, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Because that really, that stuck with us. Um, and that is actually a ripper of a song to see live. And also, why I was curious because you have this one song that has like clean singing. Oh my yeah, dude, this is this is fucking sick, dude. It's hot. It, we it's didn't it, really do it new. on purpose. Yeah, it was it's just like, like hey, what if we came, tried this here? Yeah, yeah it kind of came organic. Um, yeah. I will say that at the time I was, and I still am, obsessed with uh, North Lane's record Alien. Um, it's a sick it, record. It's a it's a fantastic record, but um, I was jamming that pretty hard. Um, so I don't I don't know maybe that might have had some type of like influence on like pushing towards the clean vocals but yeah. it just like kind of came whenever we were like sitting down and talking about like what the lyrics were gonna be about and like then like the part felt like it needed it you know right. what I mean yeah. it just felt really like powerful and moving and we were like well how can we make it even more powerful right and that's you originally it was mostly the screaming vocal on the front and the yeah. singing was just supposed to be color and once we had it, the singing we um, were switching it yeah <laughs> oh, it, it came through like the we screaming heard, in the back and the singing yeah, up it was front. just a phone video that you sent of him in the studio with our friend and yeah. uh like it was the vocals were really loud because it was the you know the, they just tracked it and we're like man that sounds so good and then we ended up just peppering his vocals in behind it instead and yeah. we're like dude it sounds sick like this so we, we would listen to it without it, and it's like, it's not the same. It doesn't hit yeah. the same. So if if it's better for the song, that's what yep. we want to do. Serve yeah. the song. For sure. You got to serve the song. Yep. It's, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it's literally everything. No, it's yeah. cool. I mean, we, it's, it's, it's great how it just kind of came out. Yeah, we, we never pushed that song on anything, like, really, except for we did a remix for it. But even before that, it was one of our more streamed songs. Like, yeah. that was one of our most streamed. We were band. surprised because we thought everybody was going to hate it. You know what I mean? We're like yeah. this brutal... Deathcore, the classic kind of slammy you know, band, yeah. and then we yeah. come out with some stuff with Cleans, and we're like, oh, everybody's gonna hate this. And like, yeah, some people don't like it, but it got a way better response than we expected. Yeah, personally, like, I was, I, I love those tracks. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. They're very like Dreamy Desecration is a very like home hitting song for me right. lyrically. So like, I like that shit. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like that if you're not writing stuff that you don't like, you know what I mean, then point exactly yeah totally yeah, we're, we're like super critical <laughs> of our shit because of that we're like oh, i don't like that one note so let's do something else that one yeah. note sucks dude <laughs> yeah yeah it's, 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 that's the that's the curse like that man sometimes you know? yeah. yeah sometimes you get change to know it might actually yeah. make it uh, make it better it's crazy i mean i think obviously you're gonna put out something people, someone won't like it but yeah i mean that part is pretty undeniable it's like you have the heavy then you have like this interesting top string chord progression i was like that's a really cool riff and then but then you have like the singing on top of that it's just perfect it's just if you would do something else it might even take away from the song in like, in like a weird way it's cool you guys just threw on like, the singing was so sick man yeah we kind of left like the the guitar out of that i mean there's a tons of effect guitar layers like mm. high note just like single notes and uh like yeah. background noise and stuff, but there's no real. The first half of it, there's no um, like rhythm guitar. It's just bass, vocals, drums, and oh, a yeah, fuck ton yeah. of effects. Yeah, the vocals and kind then, of fill the guitar space. Yeah, and then when it comes back in, uh, when it hits with the, it just makes that like impact. It gives it like a weight almost. It's right. heavy without being uh, chuggy breakdown heavy. It's like emotionally heavy, I guess. That's 
That's why I like that song so much. <laughs> that part. Sounds like you guys. Yeah. And that's a hard yeah. fucking thing to do, man. It, say, it, takes a, it takes a long time to find your... You're, you're, you're copying your heroes for a long time, and eventually, hopefully, you, you, find, you, you find your own thing. <laughs> no, that's, that is very true. I mean, even now, like, you know, we tour with these awesome bands, and we go see a show. We all... And if there's a show in Pittsburgh and we're not on tour, we all try to go, just because it's like... We, went, we all went and saw Whitechapel... Uh, <laughs> Cannibal Corpse, just, Cannibal Shadow, Corpse. Revocation. Yeah. And then we just saw somebody. Uh, <clears throat> it was Oceano. Oceano, yeah, oh, yeah. we went to see Oceano. Yeah, um, and those bands still inspire us now. And right. they've been inspiring us for the 20 man right years. Here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> you sleeping on the job. I don't want someone dying on here, dude. <laughs> we don't offer paid medical leave, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was going to be me. It was all right. Hell yeah. Well, cool. Hopefully you guys... Uh... <laughs> Dave's dying. Oh, my goodness. I hope you guys do more singing in, in the future. But that, that that record came out... It just came out. It's like 2021. You guys are all... Uh, are you allowed to say you're, you're already working on a new record? What's the... Yeah, we're starting yeah. our new record. Uh, working on our first one. Uh, we're The first uh, single that we're releasing is going to be just like... The first taste of what we want to bring out for the new chapter of science yeah. um we'll be playing it tonight yeah, yeah come we'll out you get to check it, it, check it out yeah. Well. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah we've been cool playing song. the new single unbridled on this tour and Great. it's a lot of fun to play live it's actually you know what if you want to we were talking about the whole you know uh skype writing thing yeah. that's like a really good culmination of the fruits of that labor of, yeah for hmm. sure. we did that whole whole track same approach that we did on yeah. the record yeah and it happened. We we started the song on a Sunday. It was mostly done on Wednesday, and by the next Sunday, we had it like pretty much finished. Yeah, pretty so close. To just adding yeah. flavor, and after that point, but the yeah, the meat and potatoes were all there. Yeah, it's a really interesting way to do. So just a few days. It. Yeah, yeah. It's essentially, can, right? Yeah, because yeah, 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 we did that one uh, in between the fifth round autopsy tour. Yeah, and, and the got the, yeah, we were home yeah. for like what three weeks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we wrote it in that. That yeah, it's the level of detail that you can do in that in that time that would take, you know, especially with us. We, they live kind of close to each other. I'm a little bit farther away, but it's not having to take so much time <clears throat> to get together. You know, you can just do it three, four times a week compared to once. You know, wow, get together. It's yeah. awesome. So uh, I, uh, I'm assuming that the song and your CM announcement is going to be on the same day, the same. Um, well, no. the teaser's going to be coming out for it, and like yeah. the pre-save. And that'll right. be the that'll technically be the announcement, right? Yeah, that's yeah. going to be yeah. the announcement. That'll be uh, on the 29th yeah. of August. Congratulations, dude! That's fucking sick. Thank you. Thank you. I'm honestly still mind blown, to be completely honest. It's weird, huh? Yeah, it, it really is. is. Um, it really is. Um, it definitely feels like a big step right now. Yeah, this whole last yeah. year has felt like a big step for us. We kind of came <clears> into, coming out of the pandemic, like, man, we got to find our footing again. And, like, thankfully the fans, oh, the fans and the shows insane. have been fucking nuts since the pandemic because everyone missed it, you know? Yeah. yeah. We've, had, so we've had fans that have come to five, six, seven shows on a single yeah. tour. Yeah. Okay, you know? Like, Carnage. following us on the run and coming every These night. These two dudes came to the last, like, eight shows of our tour of Chaos and Carnage this year. Really? Yeah. Holy yeah. shit! Yeah. And there's been a lot more of that for sure. I feel like now. Yeah. It, it's a it, it's a crazy feeling when everything starts to line up and just lock in. You know, so oh yeah, I mean, we've been working so hard, we've been doing this, doing that, sacrifice this, and then when things finally start, start to click and it keep clicking, it's like damn. You don't realize it's happening. Especially no, you don't actually. Yeah. No. You, can, no. you, you don't. You can no. have that just like moment where you're like, oh, like we did that, and like here we are, like it's all. You know, it's all kind of culminating now. Yeah. Especially because when you're on the road, it's like, it's a very, it's, some people think it's like vacation. It's a very exhausting job, you know. It's very so exhausting. doing that just every day. You get daily grind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You get caught up in it. So just like any other job, then it's like you get an offer for something or you write a song that you really like. And it's like, oh, fuck, mm. this is the cool shit. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is. It's worth it. Yeah. It's worth it. So It's so crazy. Yeah, I mean, I mean the word is. Exhaustion is definitely comes up. Like I, just, I just feel exhausted all the time. Yeah. I say, I mean, it's not like a bad thing. It's just like, oh, you're not really sleeping well. You're not, and you're 
getting older and you're trying to fucking headbang as hard as possible. You're trying, <laughs> yeah. you're trying to just make your body do things it's not supposed to be doing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, in this type of music, more than I think any other, it's like you have to put in that level of you work. have to because there's yeah. so many people doing it. There's so many people doing it that are incredible that never yeah. see the light of day. You know, for whatever reason or another. So you really have to go all in on it. You have and, to. Yeah. And most of the time, I've seen uh, just, just in my experience, I've seen hard work pretty much always win over talent. Yeah. You guys are still around. I know. Fucking on top I'm, of the game. I mean, suck. <laughs> Fuck. <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> See? No. It's just hard. It's hard work. It's crazy, man. We were listening to Susan the, uh, all morning today. Just like, got to get in the mood. Get in the mood. And we're like, dude, this shit is still so fucking hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, well, cleansing? Well, everything. We listened to oh, yeah. fucking like four out. Three albums yeah, like and I would, oh, wow. today. Uh, like I was like <laughs> listening to like Smoke. Oh, uh, cool! I have like my own like personal little favorite playlist that kind of just falls down the nostalgia hole. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like I fuck with you guys hard. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Like you guys are sick. Yeah. And now I'm um, listening to you guys and wearing your band t-shirts. It's weird, huh? Dude, every, every time I see, <laughs> it's 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 see a tag inside. on Instagram, yeah. I'm like, what a guy, yeah, man. Like, this I'm, made my day. Thank you. I've been talking about you guys a lot lately. I did, you have. I did a uh, three podcasts this uh, this month because we have a new song dropping in like, a, like a two weeks from now. It's been going on. like, mm -hmm. And I mean, the scene, our genre of death court keeps coming up. And like, and either if I get asked about my career, if I get asked about new bands coming out or any bands coming out, like you guys always, I always see your name. You guys, you got <coughs> Signs of Swarm, Age Will Maker, Lorna Shore, like uh, all these bands that you guys are, are coming up, you guys are always brought up. Let's see. Yeah, I, I think that's largely in part, not just to the fact that all the bands you mentioned are great, you know, but I, I mean, if we look back at Chaos and Carnage, you know, mm -hmm. nearly every show of that tour sold out except for So What, and that was because that was a whole stadium. Insane. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is crazy. Like, right, yeah, Deathcore bands playing in a stadium. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. You know really what cool. I mean? Like, <laughs> the the quality has just skyrocketed. It has. It, you know what I mean? And, and you can see that in the concert attendance. Like, mm -hmm. and you can see that in the crowd responses. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. distant. The first band playing on the bill, Chaos yes. and Carnage, was getting crazy good crowd response, and yeah. like you normally <clears throat> don't see as many people the too, when the first right? band yeah. starts. But like these shows were packing out, yeah. and people were talking about Distant. Like people were asking me about them. So from 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 the first band to the headliner, you know what I mean? It's just such a consistently, I guess, growing style of the genre. It's so yeah. weird. You said the right word. It's still growing right now. Yeah. It's, and it's definitely a, it's a big, it's a big step forward. Like it's a, it's a, it's a more like a. Seems like we're sprinting right now. Like yeah. it, was, it was stagnant for years, stagnant for years. And bands like us and pr putting out you know shitty records and we're just like, <laughs> it's, it, it was very like you know stagnant for years, dude. Then like I don't know where this sprint. Like you know I, before I know I'm, I'm on tour with Signs of the Swarm and there's this whole and distant and these, these, all these kids are coming out and like buying shirts and I'm like this is fucking it was a big sprint now and now it's just growing and mm -hmm. it's just like to be I try my best to kind of sit back kind of watch it happen I'm like well, this is this is nuts dude this is fucking crazy yeah the mm -hmm. kids are all right <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, mean, you, and you guys are in a, a interesting position because now uh, as you said which I also agree like, the bar is very high a lot of great bands are out right now like what like do you guys feel competitive or do you uh, is there like a um, it's I, hard I, not to feel competitive, but we definitely it, do to an extent. Yeah, yeah like, but it doesn't mean yeah, in any dude. respect that like it this, makes us so happy to see our peers doing well. Yeah, yes. right. yeah. yeah. Anyone yeah. band oh, in the yeah. genre doing well does good for everybody. Exactly, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. It yeah. Elevates the genre as a whole. And I'd say ninety nine percent of the people that we've met on the road in the last year, and really in the last four years, are all wonderful people. Oh uh, yeah, just trying to do the same shit that we're trying to do. Right. And competition people, isn't even the word. They inspire us. Like we're yeah, all honestly, each other. Yeah, it's not it competition. Is. And when, a lot of times, us. when you see anytime, like we're we're really lucky to be coming up with a lot of sick bands right now. Yeah. And every time something good happens for one of those people, it's always like, well, shit. That means it could happen for us. Right. right. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, <laughs> like truly. It's more inspiring yeah. than ca competitive, I would say yeah. for sure. We're definitely competitive on stage, though. Yeah. In a nice that. way. Like I remember, I, I saw this fucking 
Lamb of God DVD in like 2004. I don't know if it was Philadelphia or Sacramento one, mm. but they were like, we're going on a tour with Slayer and we love Slayer, but our goal every day is to make Slayer look like ass. <laughs> <laughs> and I have Wait, thought that my it. whole life. It's just like it's true. fucking, you know, put it out there. I think everybody's pretty much on the same page with that. It's so great. Yeah. On yeah. stage, but otherwise, no, not, not really. I mean, David, I don't think I am competitive at all. Like, I'm just, like, yeah, like, I'm just like, yo, I just want to fucking make sure I'm, like, doing cool shit. You Dude, know you're always I mean? trying to, you're always the man on top of trying to do cool shit. I'm, Dude's I'm like, just always just trying to do cool shit. I got He's trying high to be uh, Death Corps Snoop Dogg. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're, you're He's well, trying to have the same I, level of weed clout. I think you're already. Uh, I was just going to say, you, what the fuck? By the way, it's been, like, ten minutes. Snoop, if you ever see this, come on. What's up? Can you pass me that, please? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. You know what? Actually, hey, uh, can I hit this? I could use some nicotine, actually. I don't boy. That's what I'm saying. No, I was just curious because, I mean, there is healthy competition, which yeah, it, it took like, me a career to learn because there, there's actually a healthy way to do it and not be such a black, fuck those guys. Yeah, see, like, <laughs> I, I, I never... I've been there. Like, I've never been like, oh... Uh, I've never been like, oh, fuck those guys because they got something, like, cooler than me or something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, like, truly, it just makes me just, like, feel like, oh, shit, then I that can happen to me, too. Right. You yeah. know yes. what I mean? Yeah. It's more so, like, oh, the bar's gotten set here now. Like, you know what I mean? There's, there's, yes. We got to make sure we hit that mark. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's At not least, necessarily, yeah. like, oh, we want to be better than them. It's just, like... It's like, oh, we gotta have better standards, you know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> if we wanna see like put truly, out something like I all I great. wanna do is just make sure that I'm putting out cooler shit than I did before. Right. You know what I yes. mean? And like yeah. just like make sure that like we're just staying on the progression of just like continuing to keep hitting new like levels of sound that we haven't unlocked yet. You know what I mean? Like because I feel like that like Absolvir is like the second record that I've had with the band and I feel like I have so much more that mm. I can like offer you know what I mean and like it's just like we mm -hmm. just gotta keep writing more and keep writing more you know what I mean and mm -hmm. like I'm looking forward to that future and stuff but I kind of just rambling on at this point <laughs> no <laughs> it's not it's not enough trust me yeah. <laughs> but to treat treat the conversation like you do joints <laughs> just kind of roll with it. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Basically, it's roll with it. Keep going, dude. It's never, just keep it's, rolling. It's never enough, dude. It's you know, Chris, enough. actually, if I could ask you a question that just came sure. to mind, I'm curious. Since, you know, obviously you've had a really long career with Suicide Silence, and you guys have done a lot, and you're consistently brought up, like if there was a big four of Deathcore, like you guys are consistently brought up in that conversation. Is there anything you haven't done that you want to do still? Are there any bands that you want to tour with that you haven't toured with yet? There's definitely, which is a really trippy thing. Because, I mean, we, I mean, out of the gate, we had a lot of aspirations, like when I was a kid, that have actually happened. Uh, it's really cool, and I hope this gives, you know, an insight, a hope to, you know, you guys or bands younger than us. I mean, when you're so many years in, there's still shit to do. Even if, you, if you've done so much or like you toured fucking so many times and there's still a lot of shit to do. And there's definitely, uh, especially after the past year and a half, a lot of things have been popping up with, with us. And like just, he's got, my wow, there's still shit to do. There's still, there's still, there's still shit to uh, build. And I honestly like, um, I owe it to bands like you guys. You guys, Lorna Shore again, the whole list, Distance. I mean, all these bands that like, I've seen, like, oh man, like this is, because you guys, I, I, I feel like a broken record lately, always talking about this, but <laughs> I just want to see, which is what I wanted back then. It's finally happened now, and I don't want the bands in our era to fuck it up, because they, they all did. They all fuck it up. Is You guys have a camaraderie with the bands around you. Mm. And uh, mm. you guys, uh, when we're around you guys or anyone, like there's no like ego. Yeah, you know? we're, not, we're not out here trying to feud with the scene. Well, because mm. fucking dudes like you guys, <laughs> this is going to sound like I'm kissing ass so hard, but dudes, dudes like you guys paved the way for that shit. Like, seriously. Because like, we all grew up wanting to do this and yeah, wanting to, to make music like your band and you know, I wow. have all these bands we grew up with. And so now we're doing that, and we're doing it with you, which is fucking insane. You are. And I, I it's think that, song. like I said, 99% of the people that we meet on the road are just so grateful to be doing it the same way that we are. 
So that has a big part as to why everybody gets along and like yeah everyone you know. gets along and uh I'm not saying we we didn't get along back in the day but like this you know every band in our era just fucking ruined like the genre mm -hmm. so basically this this ties in i mean bands band man members uh managers getting into people's ears that fuels egos but what i want to see and and the goal of ss is we're on like i feel weird talking about my myself but i mean SS has been through a low behind the scenes, super fucking low. When you talk about money disappearing, the whole industry saying like you're done, and now you guys seen where we're at now. We're we're starting to grow. We we kind of came out of that low, and now we're on tour with them of God. We're we're we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're about to be us again, yeah. and uh, with so many bands that counted us out, we're so fucking lucky to be a part of this with you guys and 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 this second wave, and. You know, we were in now. We're we're, we're doing House of Blueses and fucking two thousand cap rooms, and yeah. so basically, my goal then is finally happening now. And I, me personally, I'm not gonna fuck it up. My band is we drop the egos. We're fucking ready. I want to build our whole genre as big as it could possibly be. Whoever it is that breaks through or whatever, I don't give a fuck. If it's you guys, if it's us, we're alone or short. I don't care. Or, or multiple bands. I want to see. This whole genre get as big as possible and fuck yeah. everybody else. Yeah, I mean, I if you think that. about it, death, not just deathcore, but like metal as a, in general, largely in part due to deathcore, is as big as it was in the 80s right now with the peak mm -hmm. of thrash. It's not quite there, but yep. like if you think about it, yeah. right around the 90s, it's kind of the same thing you were talking about. Right around the 90s, a lot of metal bands from that era started to stumble. Like yeah. Iron Maiden released two really shitty records. Like I love those guys. <laughs> They're the, Iron Maiden's the reason I play bass, but I gotta call yeah. that shot. Those two records with Blaze Bailey suck. Um, <laughs> it happens, you know. And, it happens, and, you know? And, and a lot of other bands started changing their sounds dramatically, and it kind of just spiraled into something different by the early two thousands. Yeah. And I think recently, since like twenty eighteen forward, you know, it's really rapidly started to approach that zenith again. You know, yeah. I really think we can surpass it if we stay on the track we're on. Yes, yeah. if no one fucks up. <laughs> yeah. Because we, people I mean, always fuck up. <laughs> and that's the problem. That's yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> people always fuck up. I, I mean, yeah, I'll probably fuck up at some point. But yeah, it's like I want us not make the same mistake and it's, you know, all grow together because we, no one band's going to do it. You need yeah. multiple. I mean, look, look at New Metal, Corn. Corn mm -hmm. wasn't Corn without. Limp Biscuit without Slipknot, without right. Mudbane, without there was a there wasn't just them and they fucking blew up to no, number one at Billboard. There's they had whole this wave. whole wave of top tier bands. I mean, you can say what you want about new metal, but that was like that's that's my favorite music. That's still the shit that we listen to yeah. in the van. Like those are all bands that were totally. Yeah. And I want to do the same. I want to see like that's the goal of one, one of the top goals of myself personally when I'm alone and 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 thinking about what we're doing, what our next move is and goals. We're lucky to be back. I guess you could, I don't know we're saying it, but we're going back on to the top. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, we're we're getting out of that low in our career, and then we're, I want to take us use the name to bring up as many bands as we can and help out whoever we can. And if hopefully one of them or a few t take off from from there, and then they they then they could do it when they when their band gets bigger to up becoming bands. It's like I want to grow yeah. everything, dude. <laughs> Dude, yeah. fucking um, same way. Like, uh, I got uh, doing, vo like, I got this uh, gig doing, like, voicings for a video game. Um, it's called Crystalla. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, we do on the oh, I'm scared of that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, you were talking about Crystalla. Yeah, but um, I ended up getting a gig doing uh, voicings for the final boss in the video game. Oh, wow. Um, and I was like, I don't want to do this by myself. Um, I feel like that this could be a cool thing for like my era of music. You know what I mean? Like, right. so like I hit up like people like like I hit up Will. Fucking, I was bullshitting with him, and I was like, "Yo, you want to do this?" And Will jumped in on it. Um, I was uh, I was on tour with Joe, and I was talking to him about a Joe from Fit for an Autopsy, and he was like, "Yo, I'd love to fucking get on that." Um, Fucking, uh, <laughs> and then I also uh, got my uh, vocal coach, uh, Dave, from the Extreme Vocal Institute oh, involved wow. as well. Yeah, and um, pretty much like just got like a band of people together to like do all these voicings for this video game. Um, it's kind of like Dark Souls, but with cats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fucking sick, dude. Like, I'm fucking stoked on it. 
Shout out Astral Clockwork Studios. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. We, I feel like we've talked about that, like just shooting the shit, whether we're hanging out or recording or whatever, like how cool <coughs> it would be to have more, you know, music from our genre and like kind of like our era, era of bands, like in video games, because yeah. we're all gamers and stuff like that. And you see games like Doom come out with like this real heavy, you know, soundtrack to it. Dude, I submitted yeah. to that shit and like didn't get <laughs> yeah. it. I was so salty. Did you really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. Oh, <clears> they had, like, like, I wanted it so choir. bad, dude. Like, <laughs> take for the death metal choir. Yeah, dude, dude, honestly, Doom did such a big thing for metal well, as a that, whole. That's, dude, that's what I mean, though. Like, yeah. that, just that headspace of like, oh, like, that could be another way to propel this genre forward, like getting, yeah. you know, people in heavier music, deathcore, extreme metal, whatever, like involved with video games. Like, that's like a a different kind of platform than just playing shows for like this genre of music yeah fuck most mm. of us found our favorite like our all of our first favorite bands from video games Tony Hawk Pro <laughs> yeah. Skater Baby well Tony Hawk Damn. I mean fucking old Need for Speed games see what uh, we need to do is we need to make the first AI generated deathcore band <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> just like how Capitol Records just signed their first AI generated uh, rapper. rapper dude really? did you see that shit yeah no, I didn't. Yeah, yeah dude they, like, they've and, automated the industry yeah dude. <laughs> dude like that's honestly insane. dude it's kind of crazy how like it's the insane boomers were like it's insane are you serious it's yeah, just gonna be laptops that's serious. what's the what's the uh what i art is but what's what's the all right thing? so it, it, <laughs> what's it's basically it's an avatar right yeah um the avatar is the character that is the rapper um but it is a couple of guys in the background that are good at programming um good at using ai and they are making this product. It's, it's literally the gorillas. It, yeah. Yeah. It's the, like the, the rapper. <laughs> yeah. The gorillas twenty two. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, no sh- No slander rapper. to the gorillas though. <laughs> yeah. I, sl- I mean, it, uh, gorillas is sick. Yeah. It feels like man. Like, let's say AI takes over. Right? <laughs> let, let, let's just say that takes over, right? You yeah. see this? See what happens when you make me smoke weed? I start talking. Okay, so if, if AI takes over and we're fuck, and they're. Because first it's going to be the major labels. Then it's going to be I mean, a rock band. Then it's going to be a metal band. Then it's going to be a deathcore. And yeah. then <laughs> a, us. Then it'll be like a, a, a thing where like. People will pay just to see real bands, right? Because because that'll be a thing. Yep, it'll be like NFTs. You know, it'll just like fold in on itself after the novelty expires. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, this AI shit's garbage. I need to see a real band. (laughs) NFTs, baby, non fungible bands. (laughs) You buy the exclusive rights to a fucking virtual band. You know what I mean? (laughs) It's already started. Brendan Small with Death Clock, like. Oh yeah. my god! I'm so stuck there. Dude, Dude they actually played that fest. The they were in Philadelphia. Festival. I'm so mad we missed Dude, that. I, know. I was so pissed. I was so mad we missed that. I saw Dude, them they in like their comment whenever I comment. <laughs> 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 oh my I was god. like, this fucking rocks, and they wait, liked it. And wait, like, you mean yes. like from the band account? Or <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, my god! Stop, dude. I saw them in manifest at twenty eight. Dude, 2011 with Death Clock. Oh my god, dude, that shit yeah. my pants. I would. Oh man, that'd be crazy. <laughs> that'd be so fucking. Start fun. manifesting. That'd be sick as fuck. Death Clock. Dude, the signs. Is... The signs of Death Clock. Fuck yeah, Let's man. Let's go. But like, you know <laughs> what, know, man? You, you know, know what? Though, did you ever watch that show though? Metal I never watched it. No. Oh my god. Oh, okay, funny. so it's really funny. There's Yo, one episode what? where they. I yeah. Serious? How have you not watched Metalocalypse? Oh, no, I fuck, was. I wasn't a fan. I was. Anyone who works at Adult Swim sees this. Bring that show back. <laughs> Please. Fuck y'all for canceling it. But like, there's one episode where they actually have a band open for them. <laughs> and the crowd is so you know manic about Death Clock, you know, because yeah. they're like the biggest force. It's, it's like it's like obscenely impossibly big like the sixth largest economy in the world in the cartoon you know what i mean yeah like and their fans are so rabid that when a band opens for them they just storm the stage and beat them to death like that actually happens in the show that's how the episode ends you know so like i mean (laughs) the big goal for talking about that though man you know just put us in the show (laughs) you know what i mean just put us in the show put us in the show I don't even care. I don't need to speak and roll. Just put us like in a little background cameo role, like loading gear or some shit. I can't <laughs> believe, man. I can't believe you've never seen that show. That's incredible. Yeah, I can't. It's such like a metalhead staple. I know. Gave, gave it a shot, and 
Oh, you yeah. just let me it yeah, just didn't hit right. It did. It, yeah. it, it didn't hit me. Sorry, well, guys. I was in like high Ladies. school when it came out, so I was super impressionable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. just people getting fucking murdered to death metal. For yeah, I thought, was, I thought it was insane. Yeah, I was, I was like, also yeah, like still was, just yes. getting into it, so I'm like, oh, there's a funny ass cartoon. Well, in the riffs about metal. when it came out, the riffs were like, yeah. burn the fresh, earth, bro. Burn the earth, earth, earth is, is such a banger. Dang. Fresh riff, let's do it. Yeah, he was Jeff. Give me a riff. Well, well, fucking sick. I'm sorry that I didn't, I didn't see that show. <laughs> I mean, yeah, not everybody's cup of tea. No. Yeah. So, well, I mean, so when are we going to do a tour with uh, AI bands? <laughs> Dude, fucking... Five years from now? Um, if we could just upload ourselves and all stay home. <laughs> work from yes. home touring? Yes. You're really thinking <laughs> in the future, bro. Hey, no. If we wouldn't have gone out of the pandemic, now. that's where it would be. <laughs> His eyes are like... <laughs> you guys are fucked. <laughs> I'm fucked. This is bad news, boys. Bad news, boys. <laughs> We're going down. Go ahead. I'll, I'll share a. I'll share a fucking deep secret with, about me. Is I'm already thinking about taking a podcast to the metaverse and having See? and buying property in the metaverse and have a podcast studio and have bands take their. Metaverse yeah, bands. Let's go. See that room. You're already, We're in. I'm ready. I'm ready in. See, you're already. You already know what's going on. Man. Like, <laughs> yeah, dude. That's a deep secret I have. Yeah, dude. You got, you <laughs> not like, not anymore. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like I can't just have a physical. St- I need a fucking metaverse studio too. God. I mean, but the thing is, is that like right now with that being like a new emerging f- technology, I don't know what to call it really, but like I mean. Those getting ahead of that platform. Platform. artwork is really fucking smart. crazy, though. Do you see any of those? No. Dude, this shit's fucking crazy. This just looks like Fortnite characters. No, it does <laughs> just look like Fortnite characters, but give it a minute. This give is how time, Black yeah. Mirror started, you know what I mean? Uh, hold on. No, just... That's a great show. That show fucks Speaking me up. Speaking of it's good a, shows, yeah, Black that's Mirror a is a great show. I love how they have a different actor for every single episode. It's all, all self-contained, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that. But it's so weird because it keeps you connected to the whole series because you don't really connect with the That's the the same reason I like Love, Death, and Robots because it's like... See, that's pretty cool, right? Dude, the one episodes that could just go forever. I watched the episode about the dude who was like on the spaceship when he learned that he was like being like held asleep by like the insect queen or whatever. That was crazy. That's dark. Fucked. That shit fucked me up. Honestly, hold up, hang on. I'm merch designed the end of Robots thing would be heavy. See, like, it's cool. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool, man. I'm like, well, well, well then I guess the last question with AI is who's going to get the chip? Yeah. <laughs> well, it depends on... <laughs> I'm thinking about it. What are the perks? <laughs> chip? Pro- pros and cons. I don't even know what we're talking about. What chip? You know, you know how they were talking about putting a chip inside your fucking body? Oh, you mean like the cell phones in Futurama that yeah. like went behind your eye and shit? So you're going to fucking connect. Your, uh, huh? That's you all. But if you finally you wake up, oh damn! Oh <laughs> uh, sure. It's matrix shit. Matrix shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so guys, seriously, thank you guys for being here and, and coming out. Dude, thanks for having yeah, us. Thanks for having thanks us. Thanks for letting us hot box. Absolute honor. Room, dude. Anytime, man. Thank you guys for the weed and the the uh, tobacco. I know you guys don't like tobacco <laughs> joints. I know that. So, but. Had to keep this thing somewhat <laughs> on on the tracks. Yeah. Oh, we I think we stayed on the tracks. Pretty yeah, good, don't you think? This is nice to catch up, man. We appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, it's cool. So you guys got a new song coming out on the seventh. Yes. Yeah, yes. September seventh, Unbridled will be released. Wow, and that, will that be on on Central Media? Yep, yes. that will be our first like release, first Same single type. release with Century Media. That's sick that you're putting out the first song you're going to put out on a label is going to be a single. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. We did that with our last album, and it's just like, I think it's a nice way of establishing a change and like making a statement kind of. It's a little different than like the, the regular three songs, here's our album, roll out, you know? Yeah. I think it's a. And After also, those songs, we'll our, sing, yeah. Yeah, our singles tend to do really well too outside of album. Um, releases so well, it's yeah. actually a really wow. smart format because if you look at you See, know rappers do that spirit box did it and they had rapid growth because of it mm-hmm. like the releasing single format keeps the listeners interested you yes. know what i mean because it's like it's one song you'll get the hype and then you release another single like two months later instead yeah. of 12 that's songs not what's happening so don't think that that's what's gonna happen <laughs> well I, I realize well i'm just I'm, no i'm saying it for people listening they're gonna have to yeah really that's not a, it's not a guaranteed formula you actually have to make good music <laughs> yeah. you know but yeah. you know 
I remember thinking when Spirit Box was doing that rollout, I'm like, where's the album? Where's the album? And then I'm realizing that's the marketing keeping me interested. Interesting. You know yeah. what I mean? Because <laughs> like they'd release a single and I'm like, oh, that's, you know, that's fucking cool. Or they'd release a remix like they did with uh, Holy Roller, you know? Yeah, it's and, great. And you listen to it and it gets you excited because it's more and then you want a larger package of it. And then, then they yeah. finally release the album yeah. and now look what they're doing. Like, yeah. it's a really smart way of looking at it. Yeah, I like singles. Yeah, yeah we have that coming out on the 7th. It'll be a video as well as a, a like song. A single itself, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we well, put a lot I'm, of fucking bro. I got to work I'm into sorry. This. <laughs> <laughs> put a lot of work into the video. It's, yeah, we uh, uh, shot it. Um, we shot the performance stuff before we went on Chaos and Carnage. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 Few, actually, a few days before we left, I think. Yeah, Prepared. just a few days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that'll be out, and then we'll be working on new <coughs> tunes for a minute. Mm-hmm. Holy shit! To it. Yeah, you guys doing the single thing is fucking dope. You can also do singles on albums too. Which I, yeah. I'm just now learning, which is we're literally about to do it. Like you could, uh, <laughs> you're, you're allowed a certain, uh, you're allowed a certain amount of singles per record. Yeah, and it's always half the record. So let's say your record's ten songs, five singles, or six songs, five singles, or if it's six, uh, twelve, six. So it's always mm-hmm. half half the record, and and you and you could push them as uh, singles, and that's like the geek stuff that I've been being in contact with labels. We've learned a lot all, in the last that year and a half because we started mostly self-managing until yeah, recently, dude. and oh wow, so much shit that like just that yeah. was kind of unintentionally kept from us. And we're learning about now. It's like yeah, like made up. It's been a really good uh, cycle. Is whenever me and Bobby like took over like everything and like kind of pushed through and got How's everything that on track. Oh, that was um, really well. it, it's going great. We we're actually, working with Good Fight now. Yeah, we have Good Fight, uh, Carl um, from Good Fight. Sick. Uh, shout out, Carl. <laughs> Carl's a man. Yeah, he's uh, he's a great guy. Um, he helps us out a lot, and he's the first person that made us think like, yeah, we could probably use a manager again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you kind of need that like outside perspective. That's it. When we started getting super grateful to get all these tour offers and shit we're like man we got a lot going on now yeah it's just we were, can't keep up with everything just <laughs> us it's tough man yeah, yeah like it just keeps adding up and adding up and adding up and then it's like oh well there's only a couple of us you know yeah. what I mean and then like then like you know how it goes like it's hard to have multiple people handle one subject because then it's like oh you have to like midway through like three people to get the answer of the one thing you know what I mean and yeah. it's just <laughs> oh yeah man I, I mean <coughs> and then business side the past year and getting in, integrated in that it is a lot yeah and, and it's very easy to lose little things so I'm, I'm still you guys get a manager get the outside perspective yeah hopefully not fuck up too much <laughs> no, we're doing, we're doing alright yeah. yeah just trucking along well, yeah. sh- well shit you guys are at <laughs> you guys are playing a show tonight I will be there let's Love go it. Chain reaction, our first time in four years. Really? Yep. Shit, man. 2018 or 19. Yeah. 18? Maybe five years. Fuck. Sold out tonight. Yes. Congrats, man. That's fucking dope. I'm stoked for you to see the whole, like, light show and shit that we got going on. Yeah. Light show, the new single. You're going to love it. (laughs) I'm stoked. I'll have a few beers there. Yeah, let's go. Oh, two. Zero. (laughs) 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 I probably should have said it on the camera. Cool. Well, uh, congrats again on signing with the label. We're now label mates. Oh, it's fucking badass. That was fucking yeah, rude, dude. Yeah, yeah. Holy so shit. Don't, don't fucking close out the burp, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you said, oh. don't you dare close out oh, cool. the burp. Uh, where, so where can people find you guys? Uh, oh, Facebook. Facebook. You can find us on Facebook, Look, Instagram, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, Spotify any Apple streaming, pla- any, anything. The yeah. easiest, We're on pretty much everything. The you want to follow way. us on socials, TikTok. all of our Instagram handles are in the band uh, description on the band page. So you If you want to find anything about us, go to Instagram. Uh, we have a link. Yeah. Everything you need to know. Yep. Hell yeah. Love you guys. I love your... Your music, and uh, I, I want to be surprised seeing a future tour happen very soon. So, no, love that. Fuck yeah. Love, yeah. love you guys. That's all. That's love all. Fucking too. raise your genre. Fucking as yeah. a, a team, man. You bet. Cool. Thanks all for having. All right, guys. Yeah, ladies, appreciate it. Till next time. Later.